Hey, it's Reagan from Tunstall's Teaching Tidbits. And I wanted to show you these fun interactive books that are um, seasonal and also cover science standards and social studies standards through the year. So I thought I'd just give you a peek of the different books and show you a little snippet of what's inside and what your students would get to do. We kick off the year with watermelon science. I have a whole blog post about the fun activities that we use a watermelon for and why that helps us learn the scientific process. And we actually kick off the year with this one. Each one of these books has 10 or more activities within the book. They can fit in a science journal if you don't want to make the different themey books. They all have a pocket inside that holds more activities as well as the back that's holding more. So uh, you might not see everything that the books have, but you'll get a great glimpse of what's inside. Oops, I lost one there. So what I do is I make the construction paper part of the book and the students make each activity as we learn about it and it goes inside. So these books typically take us about a week and a half to two weeks doing it for 30 minutes per day. And so they will go along, like I said, with our writer's workshop topics or with our science topics. So we do those at both times of the day. Once students get fairly independent with these books, I can then put portions of them into like the writing center. I like I might put my pumpkin books in the writing center after we've got a good foundation about pumpkins and have them write a pumpkin fact for each flap as one of the activities that they do independently. Other things we do as a class, such as graphing, and then we talk about our results and we write sentences about them. Sometimes we do them as science labs, and other times it's in response to a video or a book that we're reading about the topic. So these are all, again, like I said, an integration of what we're learning, and they're a great way to inspire more writing and get our students really interested in topics so that we can explore other avenues um, more deeply. And I, students feel so connected to these topics and they love them so they're more willing to take risks and write and, and really act like true scientists and go through the scientific process through these fun activities. Uh, on this one, we're talking about adaptations. So students would take each one of these and write a sentence about how this is an adaptation for that particular. So for bats, why are their ears an adaptation? How do they help them survive? And so it, it helps them zero in on different key uh, aspects of each topic of study. And again, like I said, there's also always that pocket with more activities inside. These can be done in any order, but of course I like to do them seasonally. Poor guy's missing some legs. Uh, the spider one's a big favorite. Uh, it opens in a different direction and the activities are a little bit different. So it starts to become more exciting. And again, I still have my adaptations in here. Why are these adaptations important for a spider? How are they different from a bat's adaptations? And so we can then start comparing. There's more to this, but I'm realizing that I'm probably too close to the camera. Sorry about that. So spider, and then we get into, this is fantastic. Um, in November, my poor flag is missing a stripe, but this is great for November. It, it covers two areas. It covers elections and it also covers veterans for Veterans Day as well as some American symbols. So we get into veterans, but we also have inside this pocket are all the election activities. Um, they get their I voted button. I'm sorry. Um, they, they actually do a class. There's a class election that we do not for president, but you know, what type of snack we want to have, or it gives you suggestions on what you can do. They do their official ballot. They learn the vocabulary words for the election day, things that they will be seeing and hearing around them at that time. Then we have a penguins version. And we also have 
more inside and on the back. For weather, we've got this sweet little torn up umbrella. My handle is missing down here. But again, all the activities inside are going to be about seasons, clouds, weather, temperature, attributes of the different um, seasons and weather. And there's also a, I'm making a mess out of this. There's also a little thing where students can track the weather for those two weeks that while you're studying that or one week, however you want to do it. Excuse my dog for walking through. We've got a giant tooth and all the toothy fun for dental health. All of those different topics that you need to cover in a fun, interactive way. And we have our insect friend with all sorts of activities for us for learning insects and science in that area and comparing that to um, spiders or arachnids versus insects. And then we wrap it up with living things, which I haven't shown you, and then Earth Day. Earth Day I like to put in a paper sack, but again, it can fit in a science journal just as easily, or um, you could make an Earth, round Earth book, excuse my reach, and then living things. We have different experiments to do in here. Each one of these has a blog post written about it and um, kind of going more into depth on the videos that I show, the books that I'm using. And also, you can get them all in one big bundle. The only one that is not currently in the bundle is the Watermelon Science, because that one was added after I created the bundle, and it is, um, so it just didn't make it in. But all of the rest of these books, I also have a Thanksgiving Past and Present, which I did not show, but it goes through um, family traditions and then long ago versus today. So hopefully this was helpful and maybe one or more of these is inspiring for you and you know it might fit some of what you like to cover in a new way. Talk to you soon.